Well, hello, everybody. It is your favorite day of the week. It is time for another episode of the Reality Reading Rainbow, where we talk about books written by reality stars, especially those on Bravo, and try to make sense of them. I am Les Kirkendall Barrett, and I want to say hello to my, my friend Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Hi, Les. It's been a minute. Yeah. I, I know. And the, by the way, this is Andrew from Andrew's Lifestyle. You can find Andrew on YouTube and you'll be able to find Andrew on this podcast as well because yes. Andrew's going to be helping me out. Um, you know, it's like I read these books and it's fun talking to you all, but I also need someone to bounce you know, the, the book content off of, I need someone to give me their opinions, especially someone whose opinions don't necessarily agree with my opinions. And so I'm happy to have Andrew here because Andrew's gonna, we all know Andrew has a lot of opinions, right, Andrew? <laughs> certainly, certainly on that part, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I bet that. <laughs> anyway so yeah um and the book that we're going to be talking about starting next week is garcelle's book and i think it's called love me as i am now yes. i now andrew i actually because yes. i get do you get serious radio because i get serious radio do you yes i do yes i so do I've, and i so i was listening to andy cohen last night actually so wow. full disclosure, I am doing a show in Cincinnati, Ohio right now. And because I'm doing this show, my, you know, the, the actors and performers, when they're doing a show, sometimes the, the, the schedule gets a little wonky. So at one in the morning, I realized that I forgot to eat. And so I was driving to a McDonald's. Actually, I had already got my food for McDonald's because I got food for myself and then I'm sharing um, the, the festival provided us with uh, an apartment. And so I'm sharing the apartment with someone else. And so I was, I was picking up McDonald's for the both of us. And so anyway, on the way back, Garcelle was a guest on Andy Cohen's um, radio show. And I got to say, I was thoroughly entertained by Garcelle. Have you ever heard any interviews with Garcelle, Andrew? Like yes, yes, I have. Like with, it's just her. I've also seen her on the real, like, yeah. Right. And so, yeah, so she was talking to Andy Cohen and I actually, that made me want to read her book even more. And I don't know if you were aware of this, Andrew, but I guess Gar Garcelle, well, Garcelle was talking about the fact that when she was a young model, she along with a, a, a lot of other young ladies uh, and older ladies too, she had an incident with Bill Cosby and Bill Cosby tried to drug her. Yeah, I, I heard parts of that because I definitely know that like whenever these books come out and like, by the way, can we just talk about how many Bravo books we're getting lately? I know. We're getting a lot. Like, and I'm all here for them, but I mean, my goodness these memoirs. Um, so typically when these books come out, a couple headlines come out. And for Garcelle, that was one of those headlines that I was reading. And I was like, wow, just, I feel like, wow. It's like when you hear like um, Lisa Renna's mom being almost killed by that serial killer. Right. Like, I think it's one of those things that's like, oh my goodness, this really affects people. And um, something that also struck me a little differently is my mom's an attorney and uh -huh. I can say this now because all the documents are out now, but she worked on the Bill Cosby case actually um, for women, women representing against Bill Cosby. So Ooh. I think that it's just because of her understanding of the case and so many things that like she had to deal with. Right. Um, and if you, she was in the Chaik and Sherman Camerata case, uh, that is a law firm representing her. And this uh -huh. is all public information. Now you can go through the court records and all that stuff. Um, uh -huh. And she was doing that and she was doing that stuff. I think I learned so much of just how terrible Bill Cosby was. And uh -huh. just that was one of those things that was just so disgusting to me. And like I just any woman who's like ever come across Bill Cosby in any way, I just feel so bad. And I feel like I'm I feel kind of helpless too at the same time. Right. And uh, and and just to protect us, I will say everything that we just said was alleged. Yeah. 
wink, wink. It was alleged, but any, but uh, she was, you know, she said that what saved her was the fact that she, I guess when she went there, she hadn't had anything to drink and he gave her a glass of Sambuca and she'd never had Sambuca before. So she took a sip of the Sambuca and she immediately felt not right. And so she said that she actually got up and she left and she ran out of there. Um, and and I don't know, and oh, that's right. You, you don't, you can't drink yet, Andrew. But when you do, Sambuca is something that's just very strong. So it's not something like it, Sambuca is more like a shot almost. Like you don't, you don't just, it's unusual to drink Sambuca straight. Um, so yeah, so I just found that very interesting. And I just found her very charming with Andy, with Andy. So I'm looking forward to reading her book. I, I am too. I mean, my goodness. I also, something I love about her is I also like the fact that in celebrity memoirs, there uh-huh. is a page requirement that they want done. And like Garcelle did this thing when clearly at the end of the book, when she's trying to fill pages, she picked like little things and she called them like Garcelle's jewels or something like that. And that uh-huh. I thought was really nice. Then, because I mean, if you've read a celebrity memoir, then you like know what I'm talking about. They're just like trying to fill pages at the end. Uh-huh. And like, I thought the way Garcelle did that, I thought that was done in a very like fun and innovative way. Right. And, and the fun, and, oh, and then, and yeah, it, it's, they were making fun of the fact that Erica put Garcelle's book in the trash for that, that now infamous uh, Insta, Insta photo. But <laughs> I read Erica's book and if anybody's book should be in the garbage, Erica's yes. be in the garbage. <laughs> oh. So when I saw Garcelle, when I saw that Erica put Garcelle's book at the garbage I was thinking well that's rich coming from you oh that's right you're not rich anymore but <laughs> okay I was watching the, link the other day and it was like talking about because I remember when every whenever I hear about Erica's book I always flash back from the first podcast we ever did together and uh-huh. you said I literally asked for a refund on that book uh-huh. because it was so it. terrible and I got yeah. it because it was so terrible. And I think back to that moment and I just think back to like when she did her Wendy Williams interview and she was just so like pompous and like now looking back at all the things we know now and things that like I've uncovered individually about Erica because uh-huh. I could, I think from the beginning I always knew that that divorce was fishy and I went on public to say that. I did numerous videos saying, oh my goodness, this is where money is and all that stuff. And now just looking at the fact that these women are contractually obligated to speak to Erica is so funny to me. Because like, if you look at the season, every single woman is realizing this woman is the she-devil. Like this woman, there is something not right with her. And if you guys, yeah. Well, I guess this season, you know, I still need to catch up. I'm a couple of episodes behind because since, you know, I've been doing the show. Oh, by the way, if you're in Cincinnati, well, actually, my show will probably be over. Well, no, I'm actually going to try to post this tonight. So I'm posting this episode tonight. So if you're in Cincinnati, Ohio, I have two per- two performances of my show, The Real uh, the Real Black Swan, Confessions of America's First Black Drag Queen, uh, to do. I'm doing two performances of that. I'm doing one tonight, which you probably won't be hearing at this in time to get there. But I'm doing a performance uh, at the Cincy Fringe, uh, Friday night at 8.30, Saturday night at 8.45. And if you live in Indianapolis, I am doing a one night only performance of the show, The Real Black Swan, uh, Confessions of America's First Black Drag Queen in uh, at the District Theater in uh, Indianapolis tomorrow night at 7.30. So if you get this and you live in one of those places, come see the show, say hi afterwards. Anyway. What was I, what were you saying? <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, we were just talking about how like the season on Beverly Hills, like these women are all realizing that they are contractually obligated to speak to Erica. And like none of these women, which I believe would be genuinely friends with Erica if she was not on the show, maybe besides Lisa Renna. Well, okay, so this is one observation I have always made about Erica, always. So do you know how like, all of the women, and this goes through all of the franchises. You know how, like, the women 
have their housewives friends, of course, but all of the women have like maybe one or two girlfriends who hang out with them or they bring on as a friend of, or you know what I mean? Like they have a couple yeah. of friends who they hang out with. Have you noticed that Erica has no female friends that she hangs out with other than the housewives? Yes, and also have you noticed that everyone around her she pays? Yeah. Everyone around her, she does not, I believe genuinely just does not have like anybody who she is like, I don't believe this woman is enjoyable to be around. Like I think getting the vibe from her, like, and I've always said this, I, the only time I have ever liked Erica was first season she was on and she was friends with Yolanda. That was the only time I've ever been like, oh, Erica was like, okay, I kind of like her. I thought that it was her baby season. I liked her. That literally after that, she's not friends with Yolanda anymore. Uh Well, doesn't even hang out with her, which I believe that entire friendship was scripted for the show. Uh Again, I do not believe. I mean, Yolanda Hadid arguably is a terrible person, but I don't believe she would hang out with Erica, Uh you know, in any given situation. I think now next season, I have heard the rumors. Now this is Beverly Hills casting rumors and this will affect Garcelle. Because I have heard next season, Garcelle is going to bring back LVP because they are friends. And Kyle, Mm -hmm. from what I've heard, is probably not going to return next year because of the damage it's caused with her sisters. And she's finally realizing that like they're Mauricio and her are in a place financially where they've built a brand that they can that argue that arguably they could leave the housewives. And I've also heard that they're going to be getting a show on Peacock next year and it's going to be Kathy, Paris and um, Kyle. I mean, and, not Paris, Kathy. I mean, Kim. Sorry. And also, you know, uh, looks like Kyle's movie career has actually picked up as well. Uh, by the way, Andrew, this is how long you and I have talked. So because of Dave Quinn's book, uh, It's Not All Diamonds and Rosé, and I've told Dave Quinn this in person because I'm still angry at Dave Quinn, Dave Quinn's book swayed my opinion on quite a few of the housewives. So there's a few of the housewives who I used to dislike, now who I now like. And Kyle Richards is actually one of them. I actually like Kyle Richards now. (laughs) Okay, I don't know what it is. Okay, if you ask me the Denise Denise Richards season, I hated Kyle. If you asked me, but like last season, I could find Kyle bearable. And I was so surprised by myself that I find myself like, oh, I can stand this woman. And you know what did it for me? So it was Dave Quinn's book. It was Not All Diamonds and Rosé. But it was also Ultimate Girls Trip. Because actually I found her very, I found her very enjoyable on Ultimate Girls Trip. I really enjoyed her. And... And get this, you know who else I like now? Who? Not All Diamonds and Rosé, with the combination of the book, Not All Diamonds and Rosé, plus Ultimate Girls Trip, I now like Kenya Moore as well. Oh, okay. See, the same thing for me. Um, And also, I have one thing I would like to talk about before we go to, but um, I think for me, like also Teresa, she, my opinion changed on her on Ultimate Girls Trip. Uh-huh. I think Teresa, we finally see a fun Teresa. And I think on Ultimate Girls Trip, these women are so much more likable because there's no pressure. Right. And I think, and there's no pressure. They, they know, they know what they come in to expect. They know they're only going to be on one season. They know this is what it's going to be like. You, they know that they don't have to fake a storyline so they can be asked back next season or right. throw a 30 year friendship under the bus in order to be having a spot next season, you know? Right. Right. Makes it just so much more enjoyable. But yes, right. one thing I wanted to talk about was I have, not, as a self-identifying gay man and a person of queer culture, and and you've done so much avid work in the LGBTQ community, what is your opinion on the Real Housewives of Dubai? Okay, so now I'm not fully caught up yet. So here's my question to you without revealing spoilers did I miss it like did something happen no nothing okay. like for me like okay aside from the genocide and all the things that is wrong with the United Arab Emirates and I'm sorry I know that could sound biased in my opinion but they have committed atrocities against women and gay men um mm-hmm. 
this show to me, I feel like it's too much. I feel like we're getting so much housewife content that's new and so many new faces to learn or faces we're being reintroduced to with Ultimate Girls Trip, with the Ken, with the Sonia and Luann spinoff shows and uh-huh. the con and Miami coming back. I just felt like in Salt Lake City being brand new and all these things. I was just kind of like, this is a lot of housewife content for me to have to well, learn all these people. And okay. I love them. So, so far, Dubai wise, I'm like I said, I'm not cut up, but so far I'm enjoying it because I love Caroline Stansberry and the bitchier she is, the more the better. I love her. The better. Right. And so, so far, I've only seen a few episodes, but I like it. I, I like it. Um, I think tonight's its third episode, yeah. And when it comes to gay men being in Dubai or or being on as a gay man that show, I actually, I mean, and I'm and I'm not gonna say who, but I saw someone in one of the episodes who I was like, okay, that man is definitely gay. There's no same, doubt. same, and, and you know who I'm not going to say a name, but you know who I'm talking about. I was like, there's no doubt that person is gay. So yes. I think it's, and I think they even kind of explained it in a way. And like I said, once again, I you know I'm repeating myself, but I'm not caught up, so I am not. You know, I've only episodes, seen two episodes, yeah. um, so I. And from what I gathered, it sounded like even with their drinking and stuff, there was a way around it sort of where even though it's illegal to drink, they can drink. So I don't know if the same holds for being a gay man in, you know, in Dubai. I just don't know. So I don't know. I don't know how to answer your question yet because I'm not cut up. And also, like I said, I saw someone who was on that show, who was obviously gay. Yes. Well, one thing I know is like for me, the UAE laws, first of all, um, they have blocked social networking apps like Grindr and things like that. And those Uh kinds of things, those things have been blocked on like the um, Wi-Fi and like cellular things. Um, I believe to my knowledge, that's what I heard in a news report. And then also that I believe homosexuality is punishable by death. And, and and just to add on to that, which I'm leaving out, I would not feel comfortable there. No. <laughs> and I would not feel comfortable going there. God. But I don't know opinion-wise as far as that goes, how I feel about the actual show yet. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? Yeah. For me, it's just hard for me to separate those two because I know that like, the, like when I see Julia um, on The Real Housewives of Miami and who, by the way, is one of my favorites, who I like love, I uh-huh. see that it, for me to know that she could not be her true self on that show. But uh-huh. even though they air on the same network, to me, that's like my problem with it, you know? Uh-huh. Um, and also the thing is, I feel like, and I was talking to someone else and I don't want to keep you for too much longer because I know we wanted to keep this kind of short and sweet, but- uh-huh. Um, I was talking to my friend Kristen Balls, who's a uh, TikToker. Um, uh, she's got, I think, about 100,000 followers on TikTok, 70,000, I forget. And she was talking to me and she was like, production is going for a very sex in the city to kind of vibe for this thing. And now uh-huh. that she told me that months ago, I cannot unsee it when I was watching this show because I can tell from the production crew that like, do you remember the first episode they were showing the women getting ready and it was very like, it was very movie-like. It was very rom-com-esque. Uh-huh. And that's, ever since she told me that, I just cannot unsee that. And well, now I think- but I actually, that aspect of it, if that's true, I actually have no problem with that. Because Same, I mean, I look at it, we're in Dubai. So if you're going to be in Dubai, you better show some glamour and some rich <laughs> bitches. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to be in, if you're going to be in Dubai, that's what I, I can't speak for everybody, but I know that's what I want to see if I'm watching a show about women living in Dubai. Anyway, Andrew, yes, I should get going because I got to start getting ready because I have, uh, I have um, a show tonight and I want to get a nap in first. 
but, yeah. but if you want to find us on Facebook, you can find us at the Reality Reading Rainbow at facebook.com. Also, we are open for book suggestions. If you have a book that you want to suggest, suggest it. I will read it. As a matter of fact, Garcelle's book was a listener suggestion. So there you go. And some of the best books I've read on this podcast were listener suggestions. Like, you know, House of Hilton, which so far is my favorite, favorite, favorite book uh, that, that ad, ad, or added this podcast anyway, I got from a listener suggestion. So please keep the suggestions coming. And um, you can find uh, me on Instagram. So sorry, Les. Oh, you can find me on Instagram. No, no. Instagram. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can find me on Instagram at Andrew's Andrew under Andrew's Lifestyle underscore RH, and you can also find me at YouTube at Andrew's Lifestyle. Um, please, I've got some fun interviews. My favorite video I've ever done was my interview with Dana Wilkie. It was right after Housewife and the Hustler. We talked so much about the inside, the ins and outs of that documentary. If you guys want to know a little bit more behind the scenes, it's great. Um, that's probably my favorite video I've ever done. I've got to plug that. But yes, that is everything for me I need to plug. And, and, yeah. I, and I got to get used to having, so I'm, and I apologize, Andrew, I got to get used to having someone here again. So yeah. <laughs> I, I apologize. Oh, and one more thing, we have a Patreon. So if you want to drop a couple of bucks our way, feel free. We won't turn it down. And you can do that at... Uh, 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 the real house. Uh, no, what was I going to say? Real house? No, um, <laughs> I was <kidding. laughs> the reality reading rainbow on Patreon. Uh, obviously, I need that now. <laughs> All right, and I think yes. that's it. So, so until next time, keep reading. Bye. Yes. Bye.